In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now for even to the age of all ages, Amen. <coughs> Today, the third Sunday of the Coptic month of Tuba, and the church arranged where we see St. John the Baptist when they came, the Jews came to him and told him that he who was with you beyond the Jordan to whom you have testified, behold, he is baptizing and all are coming to him. And St. John, in a very beautiful way, he is referring to Christ himself, witnessing for him in 10 verses. And one of these verses, verse 29, he's saying, he who has the bride is a bridegroom. He who has the bride is a bridegroom. The bridegroom is Christ, and the bride is the every soul, every believer who accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, becomes a bride. And when all souls, believers, accepted Christ, all these souls are the church. The church also is a bride to Christ. So every soul is a bride, and the church is a bride of Christ, and Christ is the bridegroom. And this relationship, as we see it, some people will misunderstand it, or they misuse the terms, but you will see the beauty and the meaning of this relationship. You will see how it's a sacred relationship between God and his people. And that's the same way God is asking also in marriage how the marriage should be sacred and also the husband and wife. In the Old Testament, God refers to Israel, his people, as bride. In the Hosea chapter 2, he says, I will betroth you, referring to Israel, to me, to himself, to God, forever. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice, in love, kindness, and mercy. I will betroth, betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. And in Isaiah, Chapter 62, he said, You shall be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord will name. You shall no longer be termed forsaken, and that's the old, the old nation, Israel. Nor shall your land any more be termed desolate. You will be given two names, two new names. You shall be called Hefzeba and also your land Beulah. Hefzeba means my delight in her, and Beulah means married. Like you will become delighted to me, and I will marry you. And this is an example to see how God see our relationship with him and us with him and him and us with us in the new testament he referred to the same meaning when the lord jesus christ started to talk about the parable of the kingdom he refers to god as the king and his son married and the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and also in the parable of the ten virgins, the bridegroom who is God, and the virgins who are the souls, the wise and the foolish. And that's what we see in the how God wants to tell us how much he loves us, same as the husband loves his, her wife, and the wife loved, loves her husband, how God himself, the bridegroom, loves his bride, and the bride also loves the bridegroom. But this relationship, there is a commitment. And this commitment in four ways. The first side of this commitment is faithfulness. Faithfulness. 
So every one of us as a soul, as a bride, to the bridegroom, we have to be faithful. Can you imagine a bride who is not faithful to her bridegroom, who cheat on him, and then what do you see the bridegroom reaction? How you will see the bridegroom reaction? In fact, when we sin as a bride, we do not break the commandment of God, we break God's heart. And that's one side of it. We have to be faithful. St. Paul in his epistle to Romans chapter 3 saying, For what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? Even if we break this commandment and we sin, and we become unfaithful to God, that will not change God's reaction to us. That will not change His reaction to us. God will become faithful. He will not change. He will become faithful to us. And a good way for us when we do the sin, we exercise this to reflect on the cross, to reflect on the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. And that's a symbol and a sign of faithfulness. You will see the love manifested on the cross for God to redeem every one of us. St. Paul in his epistle, second epistle to Corinthians chapter 5, he said, And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. He died for us, and every one of us who live, we are not living for ourselves, we're living for him who died for us. And that's the first side in commitment is faithfulness. The second side is love. Any marriage, in any, when the husband approach the, the wife in her, in her marriage, that's a symbol of love. How much he love her that he will commit this relationship, he will commit in, in a life relationship with him, with, with, together. And that's also unlimited, unconditional love that God manifested on the cross. And that term of love that we know that God loved us, He's asking every one of us to love each other. He's asking also the husband and wife to love each other with that unconditional love, sacrificial love. In the Book of Song of Songs, Solomon, this whole book describes this sacred covenant between the bridegroom, God, and the bride, the soul, every one of us. And he described this love, he described this love that he manifested for every one of us. And he also see how the bride also loved the bridegroom back. But sometimes we do not. We break the commandment and we break his heart. In Jeremiah chapter 2 he said, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn themselves cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. They left that living water and they went to find waters that will not, will not give them their, their thirst. The second thing of the commitment is love. The third thing of commitment is joy. When we see the husband and wife in their wedding, how joyful they are, how happy, Every one of them, they found the one that they love, and now it's the day of joy, the day of wedding. Our relationship with God is also joy, no matter what. 
even in the tribulation. And the whole Christianity is about joy. When we read the gospel, the gospel is a message of joy. The gospel is a good news. And in Greek, it's evangelism or evangelion. Evangelion means like to have the good news. And it's all about joy. The Lord Jesus Christ, before his crucifixion, he, want, he wanted to comfort his disciples. And he told them in John 16, Therefore you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will take from you. And that's the joy that God promised us. No one can live in sorrow anymore. We don't live in sorrow anymore. The person who live in sin away from God, yes, he live in sorrow, but we live in joy. Our commitment in this relationship with God as a bride to her bridegroom, joy. Isaiah, in chapter 62, verse 5, he said, And as, as a bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. That's the same relationship. One of the Coptic church rites that we do in the matrimony ceremony, in the crowning ceremony, in the entry of the procession, the deacon chant the hymn of Epuro, the king of peace, grant us your peace, referring to the bridegroom. And at the end, in the exit, the procession will chant the hymn of Sheri Maria, means hail to Mary the queen, the unbearing vine, that no former toil. We see a good picture here about the bridegroom and the bride. The bride, Saint Mary, representing the humanity, representing every one of us. Because Saint Mary was a good example for a soul that committed her life, committed her life with God. That's why we see in this rite we see how in this matrimony, the husband and wife will get married as a bridegroom and a bride, same as God also, dealing with every one of us as a bride. The fourth thing is purity. The bride will keep her self virgin till she is married, will preserve her purity until the day of her wedding and that's every one of us the souls that believed in Christ will keep ourselves pure and a good example we see the bride will come in the white dress referring to her purity and that also will ask every one of us to be pure until the day of wedding when we see our bridegroom in heaven. In the Old Testament, refer to the nation Israel or the soul who did the sin and worship idols as harlot. In book of Judge said, they played the harlot with other gods and bowed down to them. Can we imagine when we defile our body, we defile our soul, we are not keeping our purity. We are not keeping this commitment with God. Those four things are ways to see that commitment between the bridegroom and bride and what we need to keep from faithfulness, love, joy, and purity. Until we see him in the heavenly Jerusalem, as St. John, when he saw in book of Revelation chapter 21, said, I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Every one of us will see him 
as a bride adorned for her husband, the bridegroom, God himself. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and that will be for eternity. May God give us to live this life of commitment as a bride to her bridegroom in faithfulness, love, joy, and purity until we see him eternally. Glory him forever and ever. Amen.